summertime in New York's Adirondack region, lakes and mountains intersecting to form a sportsman's paradise. Ski trails carved in the mountains and ski jumps towering above the trees remind us that this region has twice played host to the Winter Olympic Games, the most recent being in 1980. But in the summer, skiers transform into rock climbers. While fishermen, surrounded by natural beauty, have perhaps no equal in their search for solitude. And at the centre of it all is the town of Lake Placid. Steeped in Olympic history, today it plays host to some of the best triathletes in the world, as for the first time, an Ironman triathlon has rolled into the lower 48 states and this gem called Lake Placid. It has an athletic heritage. It seems to make a perfect host. It's just after 5 a.m. on race day for the inaugural Ironman USA Lake Placid Triathlon. And 1,500 athletes are making their last-minute checks and rechecks on their bikes and their gear. Yep, okay. And if you're looking for a favorite to win this race, it's easy. The big standout is Germany's Thomas Hellriegel. He's probably the best cyclist in the sport, but his game really has no weaknesses. Eagle won the Ironman World Championship in Oahi in 1997, the sport's biggest happening. He is all business, and anything but a win today simply won't do. His biggest challenge, though, should come from this man, New Zealand's Cameron Brown. He's been in Lake Placid for a month getting ready for this event, but this is not his first Ironman. Earlier this year, Brown finished second in Ironman New Zealand, just seconds behind the winner, Tim De Boom. It was a great Ironman debut. And in the women's event, the Queen of Kona herself, Paula Newby Frazier, is on the start line today. Her only Ironman race of the year, she's done it all in the sport. Of her remarkable eight Ironman Oahi titles was in 1996. It's a record that many think will never be equal. Paula's close friend and former training partner is Heather Fuhr. Now in the prime of her career, she's won three of her last four outings and is the biggest favourite here today. And Fuhr's great win? That's easy. The 1997 Ironman World Championship in Oahi. So Heather, Paula and Thomas make it three former world champions in this stellar field at Lake Placid today. For most of the athletes here, this race is not about finishing first. It's simply about finishing. And that's certainly the case for 26 years old Jordan Shapiro of Vancouver. Looking at him, you'd never know the daily struggle he endures, fighting an unseen illness that afflicts millions around the world. I woke up one morning and I really couldn't move. Uh, I was scared very scared and I walked into the emergency room, I hobbled in actually and uh, they took some x-rays in my lower back and in instantaneously they, they saw that I had uh, an arthritic condition in my, in my hips, uh, the sacroiliac joint and they gave me a referral to a, the Arthritis Society in, uh, in Vancouver. Arthritis diagnosed and only in his early 20s. For Shapiro he could let it beat him or he could fight. He began a program of exercise that led him to triathlon and finally here today for the ultimate test. Almost 1,500 athletes entering at Mirror Lake a few minutes before the 7 a.m. start. It's about time to end the battle with nerves and get on with the action. This is the inaugural Isuzu Ironman USA Lake Placid Triathlon and the check of the watch says it's almost time to go. And there it is, the start of an Ironman day that will take the pros eight and a half hours to complete and the age groupers may be out there as long as 17 hours to beat the midnight cutoff. the case with all Ironman races, it's a 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 miles on the bike and a marathon 26.2 miles to the finish. At stake today, 
80 qualifying spots at the World Championship in Oahe this fall, and for the pros, prize money and a chance to carve their names on the Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid Trophy for the very first time. The 1999 Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid Triathlon is brought to you by Isuzu. We don't make cars because life is too big for cars. By Twinlap and the Ironman Triathlon Nutrition Bar. 40-30-30, nutrition for whatever you're training for. And by Valley Total Fitness. Valley Workouts Work. Call 1-800-FITNESS today. We don't build commuter cars. Or get you to work fast pinstriped cars. We don't build cars, period. We build the 205 horsepower, get out of town fast Isuzu Rodeo. Because there's more to life than the uh, daily commute. What are you training for? To be the strongest man in football. To run a marathon. Introducing the Ironman Triathlon Nutrition Bar from TwinLab. Balanced nutrition that builds energy and burns fat. After all, everyone is training for something. Coolness, lasting freshness, certs cool mint drops. Coolness outside, inside, a drop of Retson for fresh, cool breath that really lasts. Certs Cool Mint Drops, so you can keep your cool longer. Available in cinnamon, too. Achieve new balance. Today, the first network to deliver the promise of the internet is complete. With the bandwidth to change everything, your world will never be the same again. Ride the light. Quest. Back to the Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid, where the athletes are now spread out across Mirror Lake early in the swim. Early on, the race leader is Michael Ingardia of Brookline, Massachusetts. Not a threat to win the race, though. Ingardia has his moment in the sun before the race will pass him by. On his feet, we find number two, Cameron Brown, in the pink cap. And another age grouper with him, Bill Rees, closest to the camera in the green. They swim in tandem to take advantage of the wake. And just behind them, in the pink cap, is race favourite Thomas Hellriegel. He's worked very hard on improving his swimming, and the early results are good. Right with Hellriegel, the women's leaders are two young pros. Number 33, Kirsten Johnson of Charlotte, and number 31, Andrea Fisher of Austin, Texas. And just behind them both is 41-year-old Jan Wanklin, a winner of Ironman races all over the world during a very long career, and she can never be counted out. And lurking just behind Jan is Paula Newby Frazier, who entered this race just a week ago. She has done at least one Ironman event every year since 1985, and this race will keep her extraordinary record alive. A minute further back is Heather Fuhr, Swimming is her Achilles heel, but she's worked very hard to improve on it. And like Hellriegel, the early results today are promising. The leaders are approaching the end of lap number one of this two-lap swim. Michael Ingardia is first to emerge. And Cameron Brown in the pink cap is third to exit the water and then re-enter it for lap number two. Thomas Hellriegel is only just behind and it's been a great first 1.2 miles for the German. 
He passes through with women's leaders Fisher and Johnson. The next pink cap belongs to Jan Wanklin, through in good form, just seconds behind the women's leaders. And keeping Jan in sight is eight-time Hawaii champion Yubi Frazier. She was nervous about the swim coming in, but all that has gone now. She's fine so far. Still in the water, Heather Fuhr pushes towards shore. The end of lap one is in sight. With Thomas Hellriegel a clear favourite in the men's event, the focus of this race may be on the intriguing women's race. Paul and Yubi Frazier has been in semi-retirement this year and is a wild card. Here she seems content to swim on the feet of Jan Wanklin. Can Paula pull one last rabbit from her Iron Man hat? No one here knows Paula better than her former training partner, Heather Fuhr, who has completed lap one of the swim two minutes behind her good friend. Back up front, number 464, Bill Reeves from Durham, North Carolina, has taken the lead. Just behind him is Cameron Brown. And right behind, Johnson and Fisher continue to lead the women's race. And bringing up the rear in this lead pack is the German Thomas Hellriegel in the pink. The two young pros, Kirsten Johnson and Andrea Fisher, swim in rhythm as they head now back to shore. Jan Wanklin has seen it all before in Ironman racing all over the world. Now both she and Paul and Yubi Frazier, just behind her, have the rare opportunity to do an Ironman race here in the lower 48. It was too good to pass up. As soon as I heard it was announced, it was just, it sort of was like, I was like, wow, there's an Ironman race on the continent of the US. I've dragged myself around the world for 10 years doing races in Japan and Australia and Europe and, and everywhere. And uh, I just thought, this is so great. It's my only opportunity to do an Ironman race this year. And remarkably, Paula has won 21 Ironman races around the world in her 14 year career. Her former pupil, Heather Fuhr, always struggles in the swim. She knows it and has learned to live with it. My race kind of starts when I get out of the water, so I can't, regardless of what I hear, if it's 12 minutes down, if it's two minutes down, I can't let that wreck my day. I really have to just go ahead and, and do what I know I can do, and that is play catch up. And, and that's just the way it is. And today is no different as she trails the women's leaders now approaching shore. That's where we'll find Bill Reeves first out of the water in just under 49 minutes. Number two, Cameron Brown is just behind. He's made an excellent start. Reeves is off to the changing tent. Thomas Hellriegel follows women's leaders Johnson, Fisher and newcomer Penny Peacasting out of the water. It's a great start for the German, only a minute off the lead. Cameron Brown is quickly out of his wetsuit and hurries towards the bike. He knows Hellriegel is right behind. Jam Wanklin in the pink cap is also out of the water. As it has been the entire 2.4 miles, Paula Newby Frazier is right behind her. Her fears of the swim were unfounded. Having passed Reeves and the other swim specialists in the tent, Cameron Brown is away in the lead first. His nemesis, Thomas Hellriegel, out of his wetsuit and headed towards the bike. Meanwhile, Heather Fuhr in the pink cap swims to shore alone. She knows the race is moving away from her. 
Jam Wanklin leads a group of women that includes Paula Judy Frazier to transition. Paula is as good as they come on the bike, if she's fit. The bike for number one, Thomas Hellriegel, has been pulled from its holster. He will begin the pursuit of the leaders. In sharp contrast, women's favourite, Heather Fuhr, comes to shore four minutes behind her rivals. For her, though, not a bad effort. Up ahead in the Olympic speed skating oval that is today's transition area, Jan Wanklin is also away. Just behind her, Paula Newby Frazier. Out on the road, Cameron Brown pushes away from Lake Placid. Just a minute or so back, the angelic assassin Thomas Hellriegel begins his assault on the course. Back in transition, Heather Fuhr prepares now to head away. There are plenty of targets in front of her. For now, though, Cameron Brown can enjoy the tranquility of being up ahead. The only question is, for how long? She feared love was in the past. She hoped love was in her future. You find this guy, and then what? Take a risk. Funny, poignant, and unforgettable. Kevin Costner, Robin Wright Penn, and Paul Newman. Give a million bucks to see you grab onto that girl and figure it out as you go along. A pay-per-view premiere. They just forget about me, right? Every day. Based on the best-selling novel, Message in a Bottle. Tune to TV Guide Channel for ordering instructions. I'm DJ ABC, the L-O-V-E. Yeah, oh. All right, so what time am I pick you up tonight? How about a quarter pass? Never. We need, we need the, the man, man, Mr. Allen. Yo. <laughs> Like you men's, women's, kids, Adidas, Fila, K-Sweat, Men's, Yukon, DKNY for men and women. 29 or 2 for 50. Kids, Nautica, Converse, and Tommy Hilfiger. 29 or 2 for 50. Hi. Want to get the girl? See the man. Mr. Allen. People say I talk a lot of trash. I don't talk a lot of trash. This bomb go over five rounds. I won't return to the United States for 30 days. Ali talk trash. For all these big mouth people here in Miami talking about I talk too much and this one's gonna whoop me, but I want all of them to be there. He invented trash. Yeah, I wish him a happy new year because he's gonna need happiness after I annihilate him. But he can back it up too. You gotta call 1-800-Classic to get ESPN Classic. Welcome back to Lake Placid, and if you're interested in live coverage of Ironman events around the world, including the World Championship in Oahe, log on to ironmanlive.com, your complete source for Ironman information 24 hours a day. And back in transition, 26-year-old Jordan Shapiro is out of the water in 90 minutes. Every day is a struggle to manage the pain that comes from arthritis. It's always there. I mean, there, there's no days that I'm really all that pain-free. Um, I, feel, I feel the pain there. I know when it's going to hit, but it's, uh, it's, it's almost as if it's dulled. And uh, so it's, you know, if I was scaled from one to 10, beforehand I was battling eight and a half and nine level pains, by maybe one, one and a half. So it's always, it's always manageable. Manageable may be, but doing an Ironman will put Jordan's body to a severe test. He heads out for 112 miles on the bike. For leader Cameron Brown, it will soon be a moment of truth. Germany's Thomas Hellriegel is headed his way. If he blows by me and I'm not feeling too good, then I'll just let him go. I and mean, it's a long day out there and it all comes down to that run. I mean, you can have, you know, six minutes, seven minutes off the bike and, you know, someone can still win. So, uh, you know, but I mean, if I feel good out there and uh, the pace isn't too high, then maybe I can go with him. Yes, for Brown, this is a chance to test himself against the very best. No one in the sport is more intimidating on the bike as Hellriegel. Now, just 30 seconds behind, the game is on. In the women's race, it's the familiar figure of Paula Newby Frazier pounding the pedals, and even more familiar, she's moving up. Here, easing by Jam Wanklin. Wanklin and Newby Frazier have as much Ironman experience as anyone, and they'll need it with the new wave of younger Ironman athletes on the way up. Newby Frazier is the undisputed queen of the Ironman, 
but she's not been training for the distance this year. How will she fare? Today remains a mystery. Not even her good friend Heather Fuhr knows what to expect from Paula. Four minutes back and at least one eye on Yubi Frazier at all times. I really don't know what to expect with Paula on, on race day. I think uh, she's capable of having, you know, an amazing performance. If she feels great, I'm sure she'll be out there at the front. And if not, she'll be enjoying it as wherever she is, if she's in the middle or... But I, I expect her to be up front. <laughs> I really do. Well, so far, Heather's being proved right. And up front, as well as men's leader, Cameron Brown, whose party is about to be crashed by an unwelcome guest. Thomas Hellriegel's bike carries the name Helldrive on it, and for good reason. It's his greatest weapon in Ironman racing. Exercising renowned German precision, Hellriegel approaches Cameron Brown. Brown knew he'd be passed by Hellriegel at some point, but he didn't want it to be quite this soon. Now Brown must face the reality of Hellriegel riding away from him. He's not the first, and he certainly won't be the last. As expected, the new men's leader now is the German Thomas Hellriegel. In the women's contest, the leader has far fewer credentials. 27-year-old Andrea Fischer, who clings to a slim lead, is a relative newcomer to the Ironman event. But the woman stalking her is anything but a rookie. Paula Newby Frazier is doing what she's done so many times before. She's taken the lead of the Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid Triathlon on the backside of her career. But you wouldn't know it, would you? For Heather Fuhr, the reality is that she's losing time to Newby Frazier with every stroke of the pedals. Could her old training partner pitch up at the last minute and rain on her parade? Meanwhile, a field of 1,500 athletes weaves its way through the bike course as Ironman Lake Placid rolls on. And then Jamie really smacked it. Phone calls like this are too important to rush. With 1010321, our calls over 10 minutes are just 8 cents a minute. So we can talk as long as we want, day or night. Hi, Grampy. Get 8 cents a minute with 1010321. With an 83-year truck heritage behind us, we decided to try something a little different. Introducing the 215 horsepower Rally Sport inspired Isuzu Via Cross. Theoretically, still a truck. Sometimes I get distracted. Once I missed the beginning of NFL tonight. I took my knowledge for granted and it started to go away. Back at the Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid Triathlon, where the first ever Ironman on mainland USA has brought out the patriotism in two young fans. If anyone here can appreciate support, it's Jordan Shapiro. The arthritis in his hips and back make every day a challenge for him. For Shapiro, the seven to eight hours on the bike will test his aching joints, and then a marathon waits for him before he reaches his ultimate goal. So far, though, so good.
Not all are so fortunate. Part of being an eye man is being a part-time bike mechanic when a flat tire jumps up at the worst possible time. No such worries for Thomas Hellriegel as he moves over the bike course ahead of the field. But he has ridden this two-lap course this week and he recognises its subtleties. It looks not so bad, but it's hard to find the rhythm because the when it goes up, it doesn't go steady up, it always in steps and you shift gears the whole time. And so it's, I think it's not easy and the, the second loop will hurt, I think. With the wind freshening here, the second lap will indeed hurt for all of the competitors. For Cameron Brown, this day is unfolding in a most unwelcome fashion. He's seen Hellriegel come and go and has now slipped over three minutes back and the gap is still growing. One man to keep an eye on is Hellriegel's countryman Jürgen Hauber. Third at Ironman Australia this year, he's a dangerous runner. Now eight minutes back to his more famous neighbour. If he can hang close on the bike, he could become a factor later. In the women's race, Paula Newby Frazier is this race's Hell Regal. She's pulling away from the women's field. Hasn't raced much at all this year, but her bike form appears good. Andrea Fisher is now over two minutes back of Newby Frazier, but the Texan has to be pleased with her start. Same story too for Kirsten Johnston. Two and a half minutes back of Paula, but also probably wondering where husband Patrick is, who's also racing here today. Another newcomer on the scene is 34-year-old Mary Uhl, having already passed Heather Fuhr. Uhl is now just over five minutes off Newby Fraser's lead. And for Heather Fuhr, it's a mixed bag. Here she passes Jan Wankling, which is a good thing, but the time check shows she is still losing ground to Newby Fraser. If the race continues at this pace, it will be Heather's turn to see if she can run down her famous mentor in the marathon. Now she's almost six minutes behind. Already a member of the Ironman Hall of Fame, 37-year-old Paula Newby Fraser is synonymous with Ironman racing. She's won Hawaii a record eight times, a record that may never be equaled. Her last Hawaii victory came in 1996 on Alihi Drive when she out dueled Natasha Badman for the title. In 1997, Newby Fraser wore number one as the defending champion, but was forced to walk and eventually dropped out on the marathon course. Last year, Newby Fraser finished 11th, to some a disappointment, but for Paula, it's not always about where you finish. The thing that nobody can take away is just the pure enjoyment that I get out of going out with my friends for a run or, you know, I love the lifestyle. I absolutely, I have such a passion for the lifestyle. I'm not going to let anybody take that. No, you know, no amount of media or pressure from my peers is, is going to take that away from me. It's, it's a part of my life and it'll always be a part of my life. With racing winding itself down, another new part of Paula's life is a new clothing line called Iron Girl that Paula and a few of her friends have launched this year. This week, it's been Paula the retailer from 9 till 5. It's really bizarre because I'll say to friends, I get as much of an adrenaline rush when we sort of going in to present a line to, you know, a retailer. It's the same rush that I get as if I was racing. It's because it's such a challenge and it's the enormity of it is, yeah, is, you know, it's big for me. Thoughts of Iron Girl, though, will have to wait as Paula's true colours are now showing as the leader rolls on. We don't build commuter cars. Or get you to work fast pinstriped cars. We don't build cars, period. 
we go the 205 horsepower get out of town fast to Suzu Rodeo. Because there's more to life than the uh, daily commute. What are you training for? To run a marathon. To run after a two-year-old. Introducing the Ironman Triathlon Nutrition Bar from Twin Lab. Balanced nutrition that builds energy and burns fat. After all, everyone is training for something. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. Hey. Hey. Yeah? If the professor can make a bomb out of a coconut, why couldn't he fix that boat? We've been through this. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on ESPN. Welcome back to the inaugural Azuzu Ironman Lake Placid, where there is plenty to do in the summer here, and all at your own pace. Well, no one around here can keep up with the pace being set today by Germany's Thomas Hellriegel. He's decimated the field, opening up a double-digit lead on the bike, and riding alone now for more than three hours. Cameron Brown is now 12 minutes back, but still holds on to that second place. The Kiwi is also riding alone and losing time as he goes along for his troubles. Germany's Jürgen Hauber is also losing ground to his countrymen, now 15 minutes back. Hauber is the best runner in the field, but that may be soon academic. Up front, it's the Thomas Hellriegel Show, a show that has been on display the past four years at Ironman races. Act 1 came in 1995 at the Ironman World Championship in Oahu, when a then unknown Hellriegel destroyed the field on the bike, building a double-digit lead on the field in the process. Only an heroic performance from six-time Ironman champion Mark Allen prevented Hellriegel from pulling a stunning upset. Allen caught and passed the German at mile 23 of the run. After a second straight runner-up finish in 1996, Thomas Hellriegel got it right in 1997, becoming the first German ever to win the world title. But last year, defending the title was a disaster. When I get off the bike in Hawaii, I felt there's nothing left from the first mile. I was suffering and I wondered because Peter was staying behind me for a while. Maybe he thought, ah, he starts slowly, we will wait and see, but nothing happened. So he just passed me and he was much faster than I was. And last year he had an easy, it was easy for him to beat me, I think. In fact, Peter Reed would go on to win his first Ironman Hawaiian crown, while Thomas struggled across the finish line in eighth place. After I won Hawaii in 97, I was not so motivated anymore. Of course, I trained every day, but it, maybe it was not the same. And last year was my eighth place. It's, then I thought, ah, I, that's not me, I can do better. And yeah, so. That's a good motivation. Good motivation indeed. And if this is ending to go by, he's back to top form. In the women's race, the Pauline B. Fraser show continues. She leads on lap two now of the bike. Still in second place on the bike, Andrea Fisher is in rarefied air, chasing only the best in the sport, Newby Fraser. How long can the fairy tale last? Another relatively unknown moving up is Mary Ull. She's moved into third place in the women's event and is now just three minutes behind Yubi Frazier. Now in fourth place, Kirsten Johnson is the other member of this unheralded chase group. And still behind them all on this unusual Ironman menu is Heather Fuhr. You've got the Queen of Kona and the 97 champion as bread and a whole group of up-and-coming women sandwiched in between. Should make for quite a final chapter to be written on the run. For now, though, it's Paula leading the way back to Lake Placid as the marathon awaits. Two great champions blaze their own trails in both the men and the women's event, but will they make it? 
We don't build commuter cars. Or get you to work fast pinstriped cars. We don't build cars, period. We build the 205 horsepower get out of town fast Isuzu Rodeo. Because there's more to life than the uh, daily commute. What are you training for? To be the strongest man in football. To run a marathon. Introducing the Ironman Triathlon Nutrition Bar from TwinLab. Balanced nutrition that builds energy and burns fat. After all, everyone is training for something. Coolness. Lasting freshness. Certs cool mint drops. Coolness outside, inside, a drop of Retson for fresh, cool breath that really lasts. Certs Cool Mint Drops, so you can keep your cool longer. Available in cinnamon, too. Has this ever happened to you? Mm. You're making out Sarah's lasagna, but you forgot her special ingredient. You need her phone number, but you don't even remember her area code. So do the smart thing. Dial 1010-9000 and tell our helpful operators who you want. Sarah Dobson in Oakland. They'll find the number and do something you're going to love. They'll dial it for you with no connection charge. Sure, dial it for me. My hands are kind of full right now. For directory assistance anywhere in America, dial 1010-9000. I'm going right by you. Hey, y'all, give me some help. You getting tired? You need yeah. some oxygen? All right, come on. 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 Let's go. Slow down, baby. Back to the Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid, where Thomas Hellriegel is approaching the end of his 112-mile ride, and a huge crowd has turned out to greet him. Regal is off his bike in four hours and 43 minutes. He runs on what was the Olympic speed skating oval of the 1980 Winter Olympic Games. And the pained expression on his face shows that the bike course has taken its toll, even on the best cyclist of the sport. Running legs beneath him, El Regal heads out onto the marathon course with a huge lead. Barring a disaster, it's his race now for the taking. Cameron Brown from New Zealand is almost 20 minutes behind the German. This ride has been a personal nightmare. Jürgen Hauber is 23 minutes off the lead. Too large a gap to make up on the run, but he can still catch Brown. While for Paul and Yubi Frazier, lap two of the bike has not been so kind. A once commanding lead is shrinking. Andrea Fisher is now just two minutes behind her famous rival. Fisher placed 13th in the Hawaii Ironman in 1997, but last year didn't finish. Mary Uhl is an Ironman veteran with five Hawaii finishes, but never in the top 20. She's now just two and a half minutes off the lead as they head towards transition. For Heather Fuhr, there is a sizable mountain still to climb. Now seven and a half minutes back. But this is a position she's used to. Well, back off the bike, she is used to the challenge. No better example than this came in Hawaii in 1997. As the sun beat down, Heather made her move on the Queen K Highway, passing her good friend and training partner, Paula Newby Frazier. And then a few miles later, Heather passed race leader Wendy Ingram to take the lead for good en route to her first Ironman world title. Canadian flag in tow, it was a moment to savour.
Fast forward to 1998, and like Thomas Hellriegel in the men's race, the defending champion was in trouble. It just, pretty much from the start of the ride, was not happening for me. It just, I didn't feel well, and so pretty much all the way out is when I lost all the time. You know, I think it got to the turnaround about 25 minutes behind. 25 minutes was too much to make up on the leader, but Fjord demonstrated her character by running a blistering three-hour, four-minute marathon, breaking the course record en route. I just went out saying, okay, I'm going to run the best I can and, and move up as far as I could. And with no expectations, okay, I'm trying to break the, the course record or anything, that was not even a, in my mind at all. In the end, though, Fuhr's amazing marathon moved her up to fifth place overall, and it earned the respect of any who doubted her courage. Here today, it will take a similar makeup now as Fuhr heads back to Lake Placid, down by almost eight minutes to the leaders. No such worries, though, for Thomas Hellriegel, as he cruises alone through the marathon course, holding a commanding lead. on their auto insurance from Allstate. So, who's your insurance agent? In Ann Arbor, see Thomas Averett III and Robin Black. In Ypsilanti, see Ron Pinsano. You're in good hands with Allstate. No Hollywood script. No stunt doubles. No special effects. Just real, over-the-top adventures. For two hours every weeknight, go along with the world's greatest thrill-seekers to the wildest places on Earth. Find out what it means to be wild at heart. Weeknight starting at 6 on the new Travel Channel. You can make this stuff up. Human. Pretty good. Good, yes, but if you want great, you serve it in a hollowed sourdough bread bowl topped with just a dollop of sour cream. Hunker down, you hairy dogs! Whoa, 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 whoa. Dollop. <laughs> sourdough. Back to Lake Placid, where both here and at all the Ironman races, you can get live coverage and updates at ironmanlive.com, the total source of Ironman information. And if you're tracking this race on the net or anywhere else, you're watching Paul and Yubi Frazier approach transition at the end of her 112-mile ride. She's been riding for over five hours. Back inside the Olympic Oval, Yubi Frazier slowly moves off her bike. This has been a tough one. She's now headed towards the marathon course. It is here where the 37-year-old will be tested. Just behind her, the first of the upstarts arrive. Number 31, Andrea Fisher, is off her bike and quickly now begins the change from biker to runner. Just behind Fisher in third place, Mary Ool dashes off her bike with urgency in her step. After almost two minutes in the changing tent, Pauline Yubi Frazier emerges. She hasn't even attempted an Ironman since last October in Hawaii, and her clothing line has gained much of her attention since. This will be a true test now of her Ironman experience. Just a few hundred yards behind, Andrea Fisher is away. And right behind her, the lightning bolt sprinting from the tent is Mary Ool, who looks more like Marion Jones than a marathoner out of the gate. A 
approaching town on her bike, Hedda Fuhr knows the marathon is already underway for her rivals. Time to focus on the task at hand. After five hours on the bike, Paula Nubifrasia is trying to find her stride. But in today's event, there isn't much time to get into gear. And that's because Mary Uhl has already passed Andrea Fisher, and her next appointment is with the Queen of Kona. Uhl passes Nubifrasia as if she were standing still. Uhl is running past everyone and is seemingly apologizing along the way. One wonders if she realizes this is a marathon, and with a start at this pace, what can happen? Andrea Fisher is now in third, but she knows strong runners like Fuhr and Wankling are still behind. The Ironman education continues. Heather Fuhr is into transition, a full nine minutes after newbie Fraser. Running shoes in hand, she's prepared now to make her assault. The game is being played on her turf from now on. And just behind Fuhr is the veteran Jan Wanklin. At 41, she's a remarkable athlete and a great runner. She too can still do damage. Out of the change tent, Heather Fuhr is getting everything just right for the run. Sunglasses, hat and the like. There is no margin for error here if she wants to win now. Achieve new balance. With an 83-year truck heritage behind us, we decided to try something a little different. Hey! You left your wallet on the truck! Introducing the 215 horsepower Rally Sport inspired Isuzu Via Cross. Theoretically, still a truck. The Rick. This is Mike Holmgren, and I'm not the Mike Holmgren. I'm just a guy in Seattle with the same name as a coach. So go ahead, bench the entire Seahawks D if they get face mask penalties against other players in your fantasy league. Don't call this number again. The top hitters on the men's tour tee off for the BC Open. Continues today at 3 on ESPN. 4 Liggett back at the Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid, where Whiteface Mountain is a favorite spot for winter skiers. But today, it overlooks 1,500 Ironman athletes. And that includes Jordan Shapiro. The arthritis in his joints and the stiffening wind have slowed his pace, but he should still make the 5.30 cutoff. The question is, what will he have left for the marathon? And back up front, Thomas Hellriegel continues to run away with the men's event. But there has been a change again behind as Jürgen Halber has run down and passed Cameron Brown for second place. But for the real drama in this race, that's with the women. Little-known veteran, 34-year-old Mary Uhl, is the talk of the day. Behind the most vaunted runner in the field is fueling up for a challenge. Heather Fuhr is making up ground on them all. Water, water. The runner's been no friend to Paula Nibi Frazier. She's faded badly and is struggling to continue. A case of deja vu, and now out of contention. For Andrea Fisher, the dream finish is fading away too. The dose of reality comes, though, in the form of Heather Fuhr. Right. 
sliding by on the inside, Fjör moves past Fischer and now can set her sights on the leader, Mary Uhl. The 34-year-old from Santa Fe has had the race of her life, leading for almost the entire marathon. Heather Fjör is making a career of winning Ironman races in the marathon, though. And while the shade provides cover from the sun, there is nowhere for Ull to hide as Fjör goes by and takes the lead. Away from the drama and the lead, Paul and Frazier has pulled off on the side of the road. Cramps in her stomach have put an end to her event. I was wondering how long I was going to last. Because <laughs> I didn't, I mean, I'm not entirely prepared for this. But um, I was thinking it would be my body, not my stomach. <sighs> For precautionary reasons, Paula Newby Frazier will leave in an ambulance, while her triathlon future is uncertain. The race, though, is all the better to have had her give this new event her best shot. Her friend and former training partner, Heather Fuhr, is having an altogether different Ironman experience now. One last turn towards home, and victory will be hers. The 1999 Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid Triathlon is brought to you by Isuzu. We don't make cars because life is too big for cars. By TwinLab and the Ironman Triathlon Nutrition Bar 403030 Nutrition for whatever you're training for. And by Valley Total Fitness, Valley Workouts Work. Call 1-800-FITNESS today. With an 83-year truck heritage behind us, we decided to try something a little different. Hey! You left your wallet on the trunk! Introducing the 215-horsepower Rally Sport-inspired Isuzu Via Cross. Theoretically, it's still a truck. To run a marathon. To run after a two-year-old. Introducing the Ironman Triathlon Nutrition Bar from TwinLab. Balanced nutrition that builds energy and burns fat. After all, everyone is training for something. This ice, Dentine Ice. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. College Football Thursday. The up-the-gut power of Virginia Tech makes this a tough test for Tommy Babb. Game night at 7.30. Clemson, Virginia Tech at 8. Thursday on ESPN. Back to Lake Placid and the crowds have poured out to greet Thomas Hellriegel as he makes his way to the finish and his first Ironman title of the year. He'd hoped to put in a solid performance in preparation for the World Championship in Hawaii and he's done just that. Almost three miles behind him is countryman Jürgen Hauber. He cruises along, secure though, in second place. picks up the German flag and there it is he crosses the line as the champion of the first ever Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid Triathlon and 
what of the Kiwi Cameron Brown? Another Ironman learning experience as he runs along in third place. But now, let's go back to the finish and the champion. The swim was really good for me, but I expected to, to swim well. And uh, I was close to the leaders, which was very nice for me. And then I, I pushed very hard because I saw it, uh, the first lap uh, just a little bit of wind. And I did a fast lap and then the, the wind came and it, it was much more difficult, the second loop. But uh, yeah, I was really happy to have a lead after the bike, the run. First it's steep downhill and your legs get sore from the first mile. It was a really tough race. And the final men's standings with Thomas Hellriegel on top. The only man to break nine hours in the field. Jürgen Hauber in second, Cam Brown holding on for third, and the top American in the field, Peter Cotland, who turned in the day's fastest marathon to move into the top five. Time now for Heather Fuhr to celebrate as she makes her way back into Lake Placid and the finish with a hard-fought, well-taken victory. And out of the shadows today, a stellar performance from Mary Ool, who has held on for second place. For Heather Fuhr, this will be Ironman win number two for her this year, and it's been an impressive performance, to say the least. The women's champion in the 1999 Azuzu Ironman Lake Placid is the Canadian Heather Fuhr. While all eyes were on Heather today, another solid performance by Jan Wanklin, who has moved from ninth place to an impressive third on the marathon and all at the age of 41. Now let's go back to the finish line and meet the new champion. I was actually really happy with my swim. I, I swam most of it alone, but um, I felt like I wasn't too far behind out of the water. So that, that, was, that was good. I, I struggled a bit on the bike. I didn't feel very good at all. Um, sort of thought that I was really losing it on the second lap, but as it turned out, I didn't really lose a lot of time. And, uh, and the run today was tough for me as well. I had some ups and downs. And uh, so it, you know, it was one of those, those days where you just have to really pull it all together and dig deep. And, and I'm, I was glad to see the finish line. <laughs> so the women's final standings show Heather Fuhr on top and the only woman under 10 hours. Mary Uhl was able to hold off a hard-charging Jan Wanklin for second, while Andrea Fisher held on for fifth. The Queen of Kona, Paula Newby Frazier, was unable to finish. For the pros, this day is done, but for some of the age groupers, the marathon is just getting started as they struggle near sunset. Among them is Jordan Shapiro, who has made the bike cut off, but is now in trouble. Long, it's been hot, it's been very hilly. I have a lot of respect for everybody who's out here. And uh, let's see how far I can go. Hopefully I'll be able to complete the event. Hopefully it'll get a little bit easier when the sun goes down. I get a little bit cooler. Unfortunately for Jordan, the day would end short of his goal of reaching the finish. But he'll be back. Not bad for a man whose arthritic hips wouldn't allow him to get out of bed just two years ago. Back at the finish line, the parade of proud faces rolls on. A few came here to win, some to qualify for Hawaii, but most are just looking to see if they can do something they never thought possible. And at the end of the day, call themselves an Ironman. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the Ironman events this year here on ESPN and look forward to bringing you five more Ironman races next season. But for now, I'm Phil Liggett saying so long from the 1999 Isuzu Ironman Lake Placid Triathlon. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Definitely.